Hey, right, Gary. Chris, how we doing, mate? We're all right. I've got to wear it because it's, it's Christmas. I got it, mate. Sorry. Still you a bit don't... hard. You had it on for the last three days, isn't it? <laughs> no, that was the um, oh, the big one. That was the big one, mate. Oh, no, no, I do, I do love a bit of crimbo, to be honest. Brilliant. No, but, good uh, man. But it's an absolute pleasure, an absolute honour to have the boss on, Gary Elphick, for <laughs> episode 50 of this podcast, the Crimbo edition. I didn't warn him to wear a Christmas hat, so that's the reason why... <laughs> That he's not got a Christmas hat on. There's been quite a lot of change. Like I only spoke to you, uh, Gary, I think it was about the 1st of October. Yeah. And we went through, obviously, your all the stuff you've done in your career and everything. And now I'm talking to you now, you're the boss. You, you sit, you've come in, you've settled things down. I mean, you know, where everyone says you're a dressing room leader, you know, you, you, you're the voice in that dressing room. That change from dressing room leader to boss, I mean, you've done it before, obviously, with Worthing, but like, how did it feel this time? Yeah, it's, it's, it's slightly tough because, to be honest with you, I, um, I am one for the banter. I, I like being amongst the lads. Um, but obviously, you've got to draw that line in the sand to sort of say, you know, you are the boss and, you know, this, this is how things are, are getting done, you know, going mm. forward. And, um, you know, you never know how the guys are going to take it on. You know, we spoke after the game on Saturday and I just... That, that, that was, I, I almost, I, I get emotional. Do you know what I mean, I'm an emotional fella. You know, I love Hastings mm. and I want to do what's good for the club. And um, I just, I thank them for actually buying into what myself, John Meany, who I brought in and the other management team, especially Brownie, Ben Cornelius and Pete, Bobby. They're, they're, they're great guys. And they've, um, some some players, especially the senior players, could have fobbed it off. They thought, well, yeah. you know, this ain't for us. and But they bought into it. And um, obviously the turnaround's there to see. One thing I would say as well, it's not like you're taking over a rocky ship. You know, mm. Ags had laid the foundations. You know, Aggie was one hell of a manager. Uh, would go down as one of the all-time greats of Hastings. So everything that Aggie's built up in the last three or four seasons since he's been at the club, the youth, the food chain coming into the first team, standards, how they were set. You know, there was only going to be a little few tweaks that I had to do personally, just to put my personality on it anyway. Mm. Um, so Aggie's got to take a lot of credit and whatever we achieve this year or don't achieve, but Aggie has the, the biggest amount of respect from myself and, and from the management team. I know that, but obviously you've got to put your own spin on things. Yeah. And I like to think that, that it has happened. Yeah. I mean, I know that there was, there was a sea change straight away. I, mean, I don't know, you know, because behind the scenes with, uh, you know, Aggie, maybe, maybe yeah. not. You know, the, how do I word this, Gary? I think it was literally just black and white with Ags leaving. I, I just think he's he's had so many seasons at Hastings. And to be honest with you, like, and, and it can still happen now, Chris, with this COVID business. Yeah. It's, like, it'd be like me being on the edge of getting achieving something really special. Um, like we are maybe go and win the next two or three and we're right in the pole position. And then COVID ending that. And the He's had some body blows, Axe, mm. like for not for this club not to have gone up. Um, and that's all the town's ever spoke about, Hastings going up. And and I think he just, I think he, even at the start of this season, I, we, me and Axe still, we, we speak weekly, you know, and he would he would say, what do you think? And things like that and vice versa. But I, I just think emotionally, it, has, it, it drained him because of that. You know, uh, the man should have had one or two promotions on his yeah. CV. And for that not to happen, and I just think when we we were a little bit of an aging squad this year, you know, to go through third time again to try and go through it is it's emotionally draining. And um, yeah, and I just think Ags we played made an head away in the FA Cup, and he saw blind me. That's an FA, you know, no, that's a full time side there. The way they set up, and I think he he just felt like blind. Like, you know, I really do want a bit of that, and I want to go back yeah. to professional football. And I think it was just as as simple as that. You know, he he. he he deserves a lot of credit for what he's done, but obviously, um, you know, it's a new direction. We we want to take it forward, and hopefully, we will do that. Yeah, I mean, how responsive were the players to the? I mean, I know from from a fan now. Come on, I'm a fan now, yeah. So I don't yeah. know what I'm talking about. To be fair, right? The, the way you were getting the ball wide, passing was quicker. There was a lot more on the front foot. Like, we're, let's get at these mm. teams. But yeah. Let's be fair. Like the, those two signings you made. Uh, in Finn and Andrew, I mean, I thought they, I mean, they were brilliant. I mean, were these people that you were monitoring anyway, or? Yeah, it's, it, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, 
I am a believer. The more you put in, the the, the, the more you get out. You know, you, you, the luckier you become as well. But obviously, every time we play opposition now, I will watch two or three of their games in the week. Mm. I will try to expose the other opposition's weakness and things like that. And obviously, I knew about Hive situation with C State about you know the club sort of being on rocky shores and that we might be able to put in an offer in. But so that was one. I knew the biggest relief for me is replacing myself, which I've done with Finn because that helps me to focus all my energy and just being a manager, which I think with a club like Hastings, you've got to be, you've got to have the blinkers on and be um, single-minded. So them two signings have been huge. And the biggest thing is that, you know, and I, I what Ags would tell you, I spoke to him weeks about putting TC at right back because I think TC is a better player with the game in front of him. He's a great dribbler. But I think sometimes in midfield, when he's back to play, some things become a little bit scruffy. Yeah. But I think with TC, he's powerful, he's good in the air, but he's brilliant at bringing the ball out. And oh Christ, yeah, Jesus. What he's done at right <laughs> back. Like people think, what are you doing taking one of your best players to right back? But I'm all about getting down the flanks and taking the game to the opposition. And um, he, he's been huge. He has been like a new, new signing for me, well, yeah. TC. He, he's just took to it, isn't he? I mean, it's like, like we were like, oh, well, well, is it because of injuries? Is that yeah, why he's yeah. gone there? And then as soon as we, as soon as he got into it, yeah. I mean, I think it took him a, t- a tiny bit of time. Um, and yeah. then, yeah, blimey, I mean, he's been, I mean, he's been a re- revelation. I mean, uh, yeah, no, he's been huge. And I, I, even like you look at the goals for as well, you know, from Ollie's thrones and set pieces, especially TC, the amount of time he gets first contact on on the, on the ball aerially is incredible. So I just, I just think he's, he's, he's going to be a great player for years to come, whether, you know, hopefully he will kick on and progress with us, hopefully. But you never know, you know, I think it's, it's done him good. It's another position, you yeah. know, another string to his bow. So, yeah, and it's just been little things like that. And, well, and Lloyd you know, Dawes being fit, eh? Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, I'm, I'll probably be like Dawes' dad. So, you know, yeah. I, 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 I do, I know him better than he knows himself. Yeah. He, he, I drove him into training on Thursday. And he had the he had the ump with me because he weren't starting. <laughs> and all week I've just said, look, I've got to get eleven grafters out there. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, we'll wear them down. You'll come on and you'll win us the game. And yeah. um, he's involved with both goals. But he's just got to he's just got to let me look after him, and he'll be fine. <laughs> but you know, he's a maverick and all that. But there's there's certain situations you you can use him better than than, than others. And yeah. You just got to get that mix right all the time on the pitch. And um, one thing I want is is aggression and, and hard work in Hastings' team. And um, I think the last two games have proven that. Like the first ten minutes, we were, we were out and and to win it. And um, yeah, that's the, the the nicest thing as a manager just seeing eleven grafters out on the yeah. pitch. Obviously with the bench as well, because that's the other thing. I, I, I use subs. I see how the game goes, and if we need to bring on a sub, I will. You know, mm. Kane Penn coming on. I thought we was getting. We were struggling slightly down the left hand side, and I thought put Kane, Kane Penn in there, Grafter, and um, just to shore things up, and we end up getting a second goal. So it's just, it's just them little things. And as I say, though, I'm always wary of stuff like this, Chris. I'm speaking to you like I'm Jose, and you can't ever be too cocky in football. It's just literally, you know, even after we beat Ramsgate, I'm sitting in my office, and all I'm thinking about is why the next game. So yeah, we, you know, I'm not here to reinvent the wheel. It's just to try to help the team do the best things in the best games so don't talk yourself probably. down you've done a cracking job mate yeah, you've done a cracking yeah. job you sort it out you must love it I mean it's the fact that the amount of clean sheets we've had I mean just yeah. that, where that <laughs> defence was a bit rocky where you obviously you you, you you were injured and there was a few injuries that, yeah. the way that Finn has slotted in yeah because you yeah. know where I'm going to go with this now because I'm going to be talking about Finn that yeah. you know f- He's been uh, he's been brilliant, and he's and he's aggressive as well. That's what I, I like, yeah. particularly on the set pieces. I think there's been a difference where we've yeah. got a number of people now that are and they, the ball is a mine. Is that what's the chances? Obviously, Finn's on loan, so we've extended it for a lump sum. But to be honest with you, that is to buy us time for negotiating. Um, folks, to know that we want to make it permanent, and at the moment, the way I would sum it up is it's like buying a house, Chris. They want a certain price. We want to pay a certain price, so hopefully we can meet halfway. Finn's Finn's been brilliant. He's got better with every game. I've done a lot of work with Finn as well and the back four with foot Mm. patterns and how I want us to drop off at times. And 
hopefully that's starting to reap the rewards as well with four clean sheets in a row. You know, hopefully that should give them a lot of confidence. But the, the defending in our league, a lot of it's concentration. You know, when the ball's up the other end, that's when the defenders are at their best. You're 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 talking players through it where you want them. You're positioning, and um, I think Finn's taken that on board brilliantly. So is Craig Stone. You know, uh, Stoney. I, 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 he, he had a couple of rocky games when Aggie left. Yeah. I spoke to Stoney. I spoke to the back four, but he, he's he's a leader back there, Stoney. I know how good he is. Like you don't keep clean sheets like me and him did for all them seasons and not be a poor player. And he's he's exceptional. He's a great character to have in the dressing room. He's a winner. He's a serial promotion player, you know. And uh, he's, Very he's lucky really, to like, yeah, his last two or three games have been absolutely out of this world. Yeah, it's just. But then, I, to be honest with you, I could go through the starting eleven, and everyone's contributed. Like Dicko, Sammy Adams again, the Rottweiler. Mm. You know, I call them two the Mitchell brothers when they're on it. They're, they're, you know, and that's, yeah, I, I know when we're we're in our swing because I've got them two proper getting up to players and growling at them. And um, yeah. no, it's, it's been brilliant. Popey, you know, they, they've all they all deserve a mention. Ryan Wall, they're, they're brilliant. Nice goal from Popey, wasn't it? Hey, hey there a goal, mate. Yeah. I jumped up for that one, mate. I looked out of the I, vein. I think we did as well. Yeah, it was, um, <laughs> video. Yeah, no, but he was um, Pope. Pope, he was immense. You know, he, he to be honest with you, he, he bagged both the centre halves up, and um, he, 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 he loves it. And everyone, everyone, I think the, the Pope is actually at his best when he is he is outnumbered a little bit. You know, people think oh he's getting isolated and all that, but the thing with Pope is he loves that responsibility on his shoulders. You know, he's a little bit like when Drogba was at Chelsea. He's got to be the main man. He's got to be the one battering him. And um, he, he is our battering man, but with with a lot of quality as well. Yeah. And uh, once again, recruitment, you know, it's, it's from Aggie. He just, you know, I said to him about, we've got to get Pope in. And he's, uh, Ag- Aggie made it happen again. So they're the little things he's laid down. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, I'm very lucky to have the squad I've got. And, you know, it's up to me now to get the best out of them. Yeah, from from just quickly, just um on on the subject to say John Meany, like who's come in, who's worked with you before. When for for us that don't really know about him, I mean, what, what, but yeah, where, where do you think he's just switched it on? For so us? basic, basically, um, a standard training session would be we sort of do fitness with with Bobby, and then what we this would be on a Thursday. We'd actually walk through with how the opposition play how they set up, how we would counteract it or, or, or gain advantages from it. And then um, usually I'll take the defence and then John will take the attacking phases of it all with, with Brownie and Ben Cornelius. Basically, there'll be sort of set plays almost. There'll be three or four sort of important ways that we can move the ball mm. to try and take them to the, to, the, to the opposition's goal. So everything's done with logic and a purpose, and we'll, we'll do like possession training based on how we want to try and get out the back to, to break them down. So it's, it's nothing too clever, but one thing John's got is he's got energy. Like he's an absolute, I call him Tigger. You know, he's he's out on the training ground and he's he's almost <laughs> diseased with it. But, <laughs> and he'll know that. I'll call him sicko. You know, I'll say, you're, 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 you're sick with this, you're ill. But... <laughs> said the energy that he brings out that he's the same every week and I knew that we needed energy on the training yeah. ground on the there's grass. a noticeable need- lift there's a noticeable it's, lift yeah he, he needed it because it was it was a big void and the, and the, and, the, and the club needed dealing really carefully you know when when Aggie went it was a real it, it was a tough time and it, it needed sorting out properly and uh Hopefully, you know, it, it has been and, and we will go on. But it's, he, he's been a huge role. But as I say, you like Brownie, you know, even Dane. Like, Dane comes up with... Well, he does like, everything, he, doesn't he? Dane does everything. And I'll tell you yeah. what, he's a, he, he knows players in our league. He's he, he, And he'll make little points. And that's one thing. I just think, you know, you have got two ears for a reason. You've got to listen to people. But then also then it's up to the manager to, to sort of simplify things and you, you're getting your shouts right and you, you focus on what's important. But they're yeah. all contributing both on and off the pitch, the fans as ever. Like when that second goal went in, you know, I, I just want that on reloop. You know, it is the, 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 the roof went off the stand and uh, yeah. that's where I just, the passion and like the will to win. And that's, that is me. Yeah, you know, that, that, that is... That's like watching like my baby being born, you know, my first born. You, you yeah. got the fist pump and like, come on, you know, it's uh, 
it's, it's spine tingling stuff and that's that's why I'm in it for that's why I've played yeah. so long and that's why I'm you know hopefully going to manage it you know it's, it's, it'll be good yeah no brilliant brilliant Gary right so, so is it too early to talk about promotion Gary yeah it is with me it's because <laughs> to be honest with you I'm just always to, 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 I'll be honest, the, the toughest part for me Chris is literally coming in the clubhouse after we've won and you singing about me I hate it just because well, we're talking about someone else then. <laughs> no, no it's, it's not because it's just because I'm always I've always got fear in my head you know I'm always worried about next week I could be a complete plonker so it's you know, I, I'll literally I'll sit in my office for 45 minutes an hour after the game just to gather my thoughts and that but it's always as I say with football you, you can never lead with your chin because that someone to smash your back down. I, I just am a believe that the harder you work, the, the more you get out of it. And hopefully, you know, we just keep our feet on the ground and, and keep going. Like when we took over, we was 13 points behind Cray and we were within one of oh, Christmas. And I put, a, put, I put a points target on my board. It was, I think I had, I think I had seven to 10 points would have been a good game from Hayward Heath onwards. And we've got 12. So it's been one hell of a turnaround. But yeah. As I say, all that again means nothing, Chris. If we can't go to White, we'll get a result. And then if we can't go to, you know, get Lansing on New Year's Day. So that's the only thing I'm worried about now. So, yeah, we've put ourselves into striking position, which we wanted. Everyone's, you know, playing well, doing well for the squad. And we, yeah, just keep our feet on the ground and, yeah. and keep going. Yeah, I mean, White Hawk, funny team, White Hawk. I mean, very you'd strange. Think, you'd think that with those players, they should be doing a bit better, but. Yeah, I've, I've you're waiting for them to kick on, aren't you? I mean, I yeah, yeah, and they do. They they have sort of a few good wins, and then they then they fall back again. Mm. Um, but to be honest with you, you look at the top sides, Chris, other than ourselves, and mate like Chichester have been in good form, sitting born, and that that's surprising. Like we beat these teams, and at the time you didn't think like, it's hard to gauge how good the opposition are, yeah. but. They, they must be good teams, you know. They, they've they've come right up in the league. Consistency is everything in this league, and and that's as I say, most of it is between the ears. You know, you you've got to be proper motivated, especially when you go to dark darker teams like in Kent, which the ball away grinders where you've got a, no real crowd there. But that that's when it's more important to get up for it and and get the job done in hand. So that's what we're going to face in in White. There won't there'll be a bit of a crowd there, but not huge. But the pitch ain't the greatest, slanted. So I think nine times out of ten, you're playing the actual pitch at times at yeah. White Oak, you know, positionally where to be on the pitch. So, yeah, very weird team. But we'll treat them with the most utmost respect. We'll, we'll, we'll be on our on our game, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure you will. I mean, I'm sure there's... Well, a lot, a lot of the boys and girls say they're going to go to the game. So you'll have the... Uh, Brilliant. The Hastings Barmy the, Army. The, Aces, yeah. the Barmy Army there. But equally, Lansing, that, that's going to be a cracker. That's going to be a... Hopefully, I mean, with this... The yeah, COVID stuff. Yeah. This would be a yeah. bumper crowd. So, I mean, we've got a couple of big old games to look forward to. It's huge, yeah. And um, as I say, like, obviously you're looking at the Herm Bays and the Ramsgate within the month and you're thinking, crikey, these, these are huge games. These are the sort of season defining maybe. But as I say, you, you've got to go now to White or get result in Lansing for them to, to uphold those results for the importance. So, um, we, we, we've got to go there. We, Momentum's with us, show. Gary, mate. Momentum's yeah. there, mate. Don't yeah. you worry. Right. No. Christmas. Christmas message to the Hastings fans, please, if you may. Yeah. yeah. No, but uh, just, uh, well, thank you on, uh, well, from behalf of the management team as well. Like, obviously, we, we wasn't sure how things were going to go. And obviously, with Ags leaving, one thing I know I've got at this club is just total support. That That's the greatest thing that, that, that can be happening at the moment. So, as long as I'm doing the best for the team, doing the work then and I've got you guys behind me that's all that matters it's this one hell of a fan base the best I've ever played with and um, I've got a real fondness for Hastings you know I, I come down that road Alfin Stone and you know I know I'm in there the dream factory so uh, <laughs> no thank, thanks for everything and I, I appreciate the support and have a wonderful Christmas and most importantly have a safe one obviously my staff like John Brownie Cornelius Bobby Peter Eridge James McCrossan uh, Dane Paige and Beth the physios and obviously I wish them all a, a very Merry Christmas as well Billy Wood who's who's been fantastic you know the support I've had off Billy since I've been manager regards player recruitment chewing the fat at, uh, at difficult times like I remember coming out of Hayward Chief thinking crikey you know we've got a, a big job in in hand here and he's 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 
he's steadied the ship alongside me as well. Billy, he's been massive for this club. And obviously Darren Burney, Peter Sherlock, then the directors as well, because they don't really know who I am. They've seen me play, but they're not sure what sort of manager I am. But they've um, they've put their support in me. So obviously you've got to thank people when they give you opportunities. So um, no, big thanks to them. And I wish them all a good Christmas as well. Nice one. Well, I know Brilliant. all of us Hastings fans wish, wish you and your family a Merry yeah. Christmas and obviously all the players as well. Top take man, care, Chris. Uh, take yeah, care, keep yeah. up the good work as well with yourself, yeah. Chris. Cheers, great. Chap. Cheers, mate. Top man. Bye, mate.